what do we have over here? We have a electric field over a round trip path, okay? Um, so in other words, a non-coulomb electric field. So you can think of it as a non-coulomb force per unit charge, right? Remember electric fields we can say are, you can take the electric force and divide it by the charge. That's one way to define an electric field. And the uh, a non-coulomb force per unit charge times the distance, well, force times the distance is what? Work, right? So a non-coulomb uh, work per unit charge is also called what? Where we, we gave a special name for that. Non-coulomb work per unit charge. For instance, in a battery, is called what? Not potential energy, but it's the... It's related to potential energy because the potential, the potential energy is coming from the electric field or the Coulomb electric field, right? But in a battery, remember, we said we have to do work against that electric field in order to get the charges to move the opposite directions. So if you have a positive and negative terminal, the electron, the electric field is pointing that way. The force on the mobile electrons is that way due to the electric field. And so you have to do work in that direction by a non-coulomb force to get them to move in that direction. And that, someone said it, not that non-coulomb work per unit charge is called what? EMF. That's an EMF. So another way that Faraday's law is sometimes written is that this is an EMF equal to a negative time rate of change. And as I said, this thing is a magnetic field through an area or a magnetic flux. So... You can also write it this way. This is an EMF because we have a non-coulomb uh, field doing work over a distance, okay, or exerting a force over a distance. Okay. okay um, we need to go through some steps in order to figure out how to, or uh, to get the direction of these electric fields that are created by changing magnetic fields. And there's a procedure we have to go through. And so if we're, we're going to spend some time just talking about how to get the direction before we get do any uh, calculation on this. So direction of this non-Coulomb electric field. And there's some just a, there's just a procedure you have to go through, and you just kind of have to go through the steps each time in order to get this right. And the first step is you want to draw the initial magnetic field at the location you're interested in. So, for example, inside this loop, if we were trying to find the electric field around this loop. Second step is draw the final magnetic field. Okay, If the magnetic field's changing, we're drawing it at some initial time, then waiting some short amount of time, and then drawing the new magnetic field after a short time later. Step three is draw the change in, in magnetic field, delta B, which is B final minus B initial. Okay. And then there's yet another right-hand rule. Sorry, but you just can't avoid it. And the way it works is this. Point and thumb of right hand in the direction of negative delta B over delta T. And it's neg it's, this negative sign is showing up here, so that's where why we need this negative dBdt direction. And then the fingers of your right hand curl around in the direction of the non-Coulomb electric field. Okay? This isn't the only way to get this direction, but it's really the most straightforward way. And if you just stick to the steps, you should be able to get it right every time. Okay? So we're going to go through uh, some examples here. 
And let's take a look at uh, question or two. Let's see. So the first thing we want to do is just remind ourselves how to find changes in vector quantities. And so let's just think about finding delta B. Here is a bar magnet. South pole is closer to the origin than the north pole. Okay, so range this way. And we're at time t1, it's here, and then we're moving it closer. So at time t2, the bar magnet's closer to the origin than it was earlier. What's the direction of delta b? Okay, so we just want to figure out what's the direction of the change in magnetic field. Reminder, you, the first thing you should do is draw the initial magnetic field. Next thing you should do is draw the final magnetic field. Think about what changes between the two. And then you should be able to figure out the ch direction of that delta B vector. And we're all over the map. Okay. So drawing pictures is really the only way you can do this. And if you're trying to do it in your head, you're probably going to make mistakes. So let's just draw the picture. You have, we're looking for the delta B at the origin, right? So here's our bar magnet. So the first thing we have to think about is what's the direction of the magnetic field initially? It's pointing what direction? Down. Okay. We know that near the south pole, the magnetic field would be pointing down. So that's B initial. Okay. And, well, let me get rid of this. I move the bar magnet closer, what happens to the magnetic field? It gets larger, right? So B final is pointing down, but I should draw the vector bigger, okay? So there's B final. What's the direction of delta B? Down. It's got to be down. Negative y direction, right? If I have a vector pointing downward and I want to make it bigger, I have to add to it a downward vector, right? So that's delta B. And you can do this graphically in a number of different ways, but just in any vector quantity, it doesn't matter if it's a magnetic field or not, you can always draw the vectors tail to tail, right? And then the delta B points from the head or the tip of the initial to the tip of the final, right? Or you can think about adding vectors graphically. If I add B initial, head to tail with delta B, I get back B final, right? You can think of it as B final is equal to B initial plus delta B, right? So we're just adding two vectors graphically, B initial and delta B giving us a larger B final, right? Is this okay? Okay, this is this is kind of basic vector stuff, right? So this is might be a review, but uh, something you got to be able to do, be able to do. Uh, let's try another one. Now you can kind of get the idea. Same thing, same similar sort of thing. We have the uh, north pole closer to the origin. Now we're moving the bar magnet farther away. And be careful here of the sign because I'm asking for negative d delta b over delta b delta t. Okay, so the steps are first find B initial, find B final, find the change, then find the negative change divided by a short amount of time. So the vector should be uh, just dividing by a positive number there. Okay, a bit more agreement this time. Answer number three, positive Y direction. I believe that is correct. The North Pole is getting farther away, right? So we have the initial magnetic field pointing. B points how? Up. B points up. So that's B initial. If I move the uh, magnet farther away, B final is up, but smaller. Thank you. So there's B final. Delta B is down. Delta B is down, but negative delta B is therefore up. Okay. So that's delta B. Negative DB dt, or negative delta B over delta T, is pointing up. Okay. 
So what we'll do next time is that now that we know how to figure out these changes in the magnetic field and the negative change in the magnetic field, we can then apply the last step, which is figuring out how what the direction of the non-Coulomb electric field is in a situation like we demonstrated earlier.